old man wearing tracksuit trousers leans on the frame stock of his rifle. He gathers a big ball of spit in his mouth, then spits it out into the extinguished fire before him. He raises his black eyes, hooded by creased eyelids, to meet yours. Unclouded by cataracts, his eyesight is sharp. He's practically tearing up from spite. Hatred got the best of him a long time ago. This man hates everything. The what now? I can't hear you. I may have. All sorts of little rats have come sniffing around, trying to give up the position. The position? Sounds like a hiding place. Fire guy. Regressive bourgeoisie henchman. Can't even talk like a grown-up. My eyesight? <clears throat> yes. Helps me see all the shit. A shudder of disgust passes his left side. His right side remains motionless. I did. And you opened it. How? I should have burned that console down. Reactionary rock and roll music. Playing on the water. I told you we shouldn't play sad FM. The fascists were right about rock and roll. It is degenerate. Hip gyrating mental illness music. It's not nice. It's a piece of shit. But it gets the job done. It's a Triangong 446. Southeast Samaran made. Exotic. Must be defunct too. No modern rifle manufacturer of that name springs to mind. A Samaran rifle? How did you get hold of one? It was sent to us by our brothers in the Sinyao Commune. Military aid. You heard me. It's good now. Like chalk, white from the ball. He's right. Almost no one remembers there was a third metastasis of the World Revolution in the Safari Empire. Extinguished in 06. They wouldn't like hearing their name in your mouth. Damn, dog. The time will come to win his trust, comrade. It is not now. You need to take care of the gun first. The lieutenant pulled his pistol from the holster. You are a glorified night watchman. This is a service rifle. I can only lay it down before an enemy commander of corresponding rank. The words, I am an enemy commander, sound cold as iron from your lungs. The old man still hugs his gun. And what rank would that be, dog? A big wheel of the 4th Regiment of the Pederast Army. To hell with it. It's a walking stick anyway. It's out of bullets. Like an amputated limb in the sand, he stares on, his wrinkled mouth moving without a sound. A strange sadness, like the future teaches you to be alone. The present. The present to be afraid and cold. Real music, real projetkult. That's La Revachelier, not your rock and roll misanthropy. Chanson de Soldat of the Black and Whites. Marching song. Forget about that for a moment. You need to address that remark first. There you go. One of three. In Grad, they sang Brave Children 
favorites of history. And in Sin Yao, it was... some Samaran shit, I guess. Everyone has. They named a fucking perfume after it. Talk to her. It's the drugs you're all on. Druggies, whiners, and whores. There was something there when he said, talk to her. He was curious. All around you, the air slowly circulates the islet, carrying little swallows and black-beaked seagulls in its slow drift. They all, every one of them, every bird, mammal, and crustacean, Keep their distance. I've seen kids lose their minds and start talking to the city. Asking it to protect them when the shelling gets bad. Calling it La Reva Cholière. Cities can't talk. It's bourgeois idealism. I don't want to talk about this shit anymore. How did it go? Something about shooting rabbits. I don't know. I can't remember. It doesn't matter. It's gone now. His gaze follows your motions. The rifle feels surprisingly light in your hand. Frame stopped and patched in places with tape and wire. The rifle's in a shabby state, like a crutch that's seen too much travel. Hieroglyphs are embossed into the forearm, made of walnut. On the butt, you see Vespertine writing, burnt into the wood. Triangong, 4.46 mm, made in Sinyao. No one said it has to be a Belma grave. We were just guessing. From ballistics, it could easily have been a Triangong. It doesn't matter if it was made in Shanti Shanti. All it has to do is use jacketed ammunition. And it does. The right type and the right calibre. He's liking this. The old man keeps following your motion with his gaze. His right arm twitches suddenly. This looked very much like the murder weapon. It can be used against him to get a confession, in time. My name is Josef Lilianovich Dross, political commissar of the 114th Anti-Aircraft Division of the 4th Army of the Commune of Revachol. I am a deserter, a partisan, and a prisoner of war. This is my termless surrender. The Commune of Ravachol? Do you mean the ICM? Your holdover from the... From the Insul Indian Citizens Militia. The Army of the Revolution. I was recruited in Jamrock in 07. Trained in the École de Contrôle Orion and consigned to emergency defense duties in 08. I left my unit on the eve of the landing. When I returned here on May 14th, the commune had fallen. Still armed and ideologically trained, I wrote a criticism of myself and resumed partisan duties. 51 minus 8 equals 43. No. I've been on other islands too. I was in a resurrection until they turned it into a spa in 18. Then I was an E-48, a nameless sound, until the sea washed over it. Then I came back here. That was... 22 years ago. 43 years and 10 months. It's inhuman. It's sick. 
It's not how a human being should live, but I had to. I couldn't just forget. Uh, I couldn't just forget what I saw. He just couldn't. He nods, but he can now. What have you been doing during all this time? Hiding, fishing, waiting. Where the afternoon grows late, on Rue de saint Gislaine, people walk home. Street lights will soon be lit. Further inland, the streets are alive with workers, men, women, children, street hawks and migrant laborers. The temperature is steady. Alto cumulus clouds form above Precinct 41. Two police officers step out of the whirling in rags cafeteria. Satellite officer Jean Vicmer inspects a series of burnt black letters splashed across the plaza mosaic. Patrol officer Judith Minow points west. The fishing village. She glances at her watch. We meet in 15 minutes. It's a 10 minute walk. The officers go, leaving behind the writing, still smoldering. One day, it says, I will return to your side. Always waiting. For her to return. Her who? Girl child. Revolution. Always. A waste. The material base for an uprising has eroded. The working class has betrayed mankind and themselves. The historic opportunity for a revolution has passed. It will not come back anymore, however hard I try, whatever I do. What has he done? Perhaps a confession will lighten the load. Yes, what? To get things going again? Fan the flame? There is no flame to fan. There is nothing left of the world, of our dreams. I was just 16 years old, 15 when I volunteered. I had a lapse of faith <clears throat> and of courage too. You could say I misunderstood the historic role of the proletariat and thought Mazovian socioeconomics were fallible. For a second, I doubted the irreducible laws of historic materialism. A second is all it took. For reaction to take hold. It's the same thing. You haven't seen it. Not really. Not naked. It's impossible not to be afraid. It remains unclear what it is. He makes leaps he doesn't expect you to follow. And this was when? May the 13th, 08, 44 years ago. The horizon was black with coalition airships. Their petroleum rose to the sky and it looked like like it formed the clouds, storm clouds. When they started shelling, it was dark magic. The combined might of international capital. All at once, all the greed and terror in the world tore into Revachol. It lifted streets from the ground and turned houses into ghosts. We were in the flak tower. Huddled on the floor, the artillery was 80 kilometers away in Ozon, but I knew, I knew the commune would fall. We would all be turned into ash. So I said I was going to the map room. A terrible shame, still within him. The lobes of his ears are red with it. The shame and smallness of what he became. Now. 
I climbed the chain link across the water and hid inland, in the bunkers there, like the weakest of the weak. A mouse, frightened of the ordinance all night and the sound of the rotors in the morning, whirring. Airships. I climbed out into hell. The landing was complete. The chain was submerged. I had to swim back. The fortress was half submerged too, shattered. They'd all drowned in the lower levels or got torn to shreds above. The anti-aircraft gun had malfunctioned. So had I. I left them without ideological direction. It was real. I'd seen it. I'd seen it in reality. The mask of humanity fall from capital. It has to take it off to kill everyone, everything you love, all the hope and tenderness in the world. It has to take it off just for one second to do the deed. And then you see it as it strangles and beats your friends to death. The sweetest, most courageous people in the world. You see the fear and power in its eyes, then you know that the bourgeois are not human. Now is not the time, Lieutenant Yefreto. I had to. I had to fight it. I could not stop anymore. It's not an island, Dwight. It's a defensive fortification of the commune of Revachol. And I am its last surviving defender. The congenitally deformed King Philip II built it to restrict access to the Bay of Revachol. We captured it in 02, retrofitted the fort with an AA gun to defend against an airborne landing against the whole world. Coalition military called it Operation Deathblow. I later found out on the radio they called it Deathblow. You are one of them. Tell me, who speaks like that? We had 50 million people on Caillou alone. Iblis. The Black-Eyed Angel. Shaitan Ahura, the Darkened One. How does anyone survive? I steal. Now hold on there. You're insane and grotesque. Everyone steals. Vegetables, supplies. It's the life of a dog. How is your health, Mr. Dross? I've been throwing up blood since winter. Red, like beetroot. Been passing it in stool, too. He does seem frail. Good for his age. More like 75 than 65. Trouble putting on weight could mean cancer. The RCM can provide medical services. You need to be looked over. I need to die. You don't have medical facilities. You have guns. That's all they give you, toy guns. I have been running out of that stuff. There's no way he could manage the pain without them. It's safe to say he is addicted to painkillers by now. It's the little joy. A dark joke, a sunshiny day, morphine. There's nothing to look over. The triage is in, and it's black. Administer morphine, moribund. I haven't. I have holes in my brain, years missing, 
others filled with pain only. A decade of... I don't even know what. Inferno? At least you know it. The traders of this city turned the lights back on in the 30s after the fighting stopped. Ruins glittering in the dark like a fucking merry-go-round. It's disgusting. Are they not heartbroken? How could they have moved on? It was hard in the Thames. I didn't have partisan training. They were searching for stragglers, those bloodhounds. Floodlights on the water at night. There were posters, campaigns. We communards still hoped, and they needed to snuff that hope out. The East capitulated. Martinez and Cold City were turned to dust. But Jamrock, Forberg, even Coron, and Boogie Street, of course. Those fucking kips had Marsoff coursing through their veins. And others, too. Some cordons of Revachol were still fighting. There were cells. I tried to contact them. Soon they all went silent. The frequencies dead. At night, I used a dinghy. I only went after dark then. When I got to the city, I stayed underground. Patrols, you lot, the commons too. They'd started snitching. In the city, you move underground? From bunker to bunker. Not anymore. No one cares now. I don't even have to hide. They think I'm another antisocial vagrant. I could walk straight into that town if I wanted. I just... I don't want to. They're all traitors. Pigs, rabbits and dogs. Men without ideals are only animals. He does not want to see life moving on. People forgetting, drinking, laughing. So you finally found it. There must have been a small squadron's worth of arms in there. Elmer Graves, right? Useless now. Rusted away. So you've been there? Sleeping. <laughs> Some nights. I'm I scrounging on others. Those my graves were shit, even before they corroded. Some had bullets in the chamber, however. You feel the dots connecting. Little dots on the map he's walked across. The propaganda bunker. <laughs> I used to, but not anymore. Propaganda bunker? They stored leaflets there. Broadcasting equipment, too. Made broadcasts, I think. Propaganda officers. I buried them with their leaflets. They killed themselves. Two young boys. A lot of our boys did. I spent some winters there. Never liked it. Kept thinking of them. No need to go underground anymore. It's better in the ruins on the ground. I do. <coughs> They're good. Plenty of talk. I like that boy on the pack, too. Reminds me of the last century. The old man looks across the water at the city, the ruins, the motorways rising above it. You're with the RCM. The coalition-appointed mob that enforces bourgeois morals in Revachol. A so-called Lieutenant W. Freighter. Rock and roll. Posture. You're the RCM. You represent the Moralist International, the enemies of humanity who took this city. I represent their adversary, Le Parti Communiste en Soulande. Take me to them as a prisoner of war. I have relinquished my weapon. I can no longer serve. 
No superiors can relieve me of my duty. You bulldoze them all to a mass grave for trying to free humanity. <coughs> a spray of blood from his mouth on the black charcoal in the fire pit. Rene, the royalist on the coast, said. Liberal reactionaries signed that instrument. Traitors who should have been burned alive. I answer to the Communist Party. Is that part of why you've been here all this time? Because the party didn't surrender? He just wipes the blood from his chin. Honor is a feudal atavism. My motive is class. No, I am not a soldier. I am an ideological officer. I belong to the party, not the army. Trained in historical materialism, then assigned as a political commissar by the party. These things used to mean something. The old man does not answer. He tilts his silver head and looks at the reeds. You see a small tremor pass through his legs. His job was to assure the army answers to civilian control and follows the ideology of the commune. Scientific communism. A commissaire politique is a night philosopher of the revolution, a future human. He was like a cleric, a shepherd. No, the opposite of that. A future human, not a human of the past. He nods slowly, then another tremor. No, you're not. <coughs> you're a liberast. A liberal and a pederast. It's what most liberals are. Detective, we have not come here to discuss ideology. We have come to ask questions regarding a murder investigation. The old man spits into the fire pit. He does not say anything more. A jitter passes his lower body. There's definitely something off with his body. Something more than just metabolism or even cancer. There's nothing serious in this world. It's a farce. I've used it for killing people. Here we go. A trail of blood. The lieutenant smells it too. Killing people? It's a gun. That's what they're for. You want a moralist euphemism? Defending your family and your property. I haven't done that. I've used it to kill people. Interesting. During or after the war? There is no after the war. Class war is never over. So he's continued killing after hostilities ended. Okay. Okay. Go in straight. No euphemisms. He doesn't like those. No, no. Be careful now. Slow and steady does it. Make him repeat it first. Don't mess this up. Remember. He wants to tell you. Get personal. I don't want to tell you anything, you grotesque murderer. And why did you think that was a good idea? Don't listen to me. I'm wrong all the time. What did I just say? What did I just tell you? Don't drop the ball now. Nothing comes to you. Silence. His black eyes look at you. And in them, a chill, like electricity running up your spine, crawling into your skull. All is not as it seems. Detective. Damn it. Ask it already, he wants to say. The who now? He heard you. 
He just wants to hear you say it again. This is dramatic flair on his part. Right choice, we're in. Do it, sire. What? Are you being clever? What is this socially abhorrent joke? Watch your mouth, Mr. Dross. Oh, yes. That one. Ugly piece of work, that boy. Did you kill him? I am a son of a welder and an officer of the commune of Revachol. I do not collaborate with murderers and pederasts of the liberal regime. A drop of blood in the saliva. Exhaust him with proof. Pile it all on him. Get a confession. The scent of blood in the air. But what else? There was something you can't remember. Something about the tracks. Suddenly, all those tracks are so confusing. Go with something else first. Stupid twat. The lieutenant looks at you with worry in his eyes. Not this, he seems to say. Anything but this. does not behave in such a way. Those are aberrant bourgeois musings. Magic Earl creatures. Esoteric theosophy. It's all crypto-fascism. Your brain is rotting from the radio waves. He does not answer the provocation. It does not look like he thinks this approach worked. Yeah. This just did nothing. But still, somehow you knew it was a communist. Perhaps you suspected it before you took the case. The vision was you remembering that. Was it supposed to? The inland sea is dark, vast, and on the surface, meaningless. No, the miracle is still waiting. This is the darkness. You are. Soon it will happen. Standing there, slack-jawed, brain festering. I saw you poking around there, looking for evidence. You're damn diligent when it comes to dead fascies. Did you like the view? You had direct visibility. There are embrasures in the concrete, specifically meant for a top follower to use. And you had a long-range rifle in your possession. You've been here a long time, Mr. Dross. Too long. You clearly need medical aid. I'm ready to die. <coughs> I've done my part. He's practically admitting to it. Dead fascists, for fascists, done his part. Just one thing remains unclear. The rifle does not seem to have a scope. Forget about your stupid fucking scope. I don't know where it is. Find it yourself. It's your problem now. He lost it. He just doesn't know where it is. Forget it. Push on. You're sad for your fascia brother, aren't you? One twig got broken. Now the others are sad. Almost. He almost burst out there. Keep piling arguments. Anything. <laughs> Not a lot of guns around that use military-grade ammunition, are there? It's a real gun. Not like your little musketeer pistols. I've seen you prance around with those. Jumping hoops for the liberals. You look like imbeciles. Why don't you ask them to give you real weapons, eh? <laughs> Going against automatic rifles with 
the flame ball. Of course you got all those boys killed. Damn, he saw you. He's watched it happen. He would have a good view of the tribunal from here. It's not just empty boasting. So he saw you. Okay. So what? Don't let it divert you. You didn't handle anything. I watched it happen. You let those murderers rip right into them. Got most of them killed. Even the fat one. None of those people mean anything to you. The vultures feed on this city, and you prepare the meal for them. You're getting diverted. Push the gun. Only the gun matters. So you watched the fight? Did you like what you saw? The mayhem. It was all your doing, your plan. You got them killed. You don't know anything. You know what? You're right. I'm convinced this made the shot. Should we call it? 4.46 jacketed ammunition, modified for range. We have it. This is it. Good. This feels good, doesn't it? Tearing things up like this. When you have the murder weapon, you have the killer. Murder. Like a marionette on some invisible string. This pushed him, but not enough. Just a little more. Wait, here it comes. The goddamn Maybells. The dried Maybells on Clasio's roof. There were Maybells in the grass when you got here. They're revolutionary symbols from the war. Nowhere else. Nowhere in all of Martinez have you seen them this spring. Wait, don't forget the footprints. The diagonal prints in the dust in the secret space behind Clasia's bedroom. Now they're gonna come up. You got it. Remember, the boot prints were like no modern soul. Maybe don't beat yourself anymore though. You're not immortal. Damn Mabel. The whole island is turning white with them. He seems tender suddenly, nostalgic even, a strange mood swing. So many this year too? The spring is coming. No, it's already here. Wash the filth away. They blossom on the islands before. We fertilized them with our blood. Resurrection was snow white in May, before they ruined it. South, the Bay of Martinez is dotted with little freckles of islets, turning green, with white flowers in white snow. The coast, too, before they piled their containers on top of it, filled with broken, useless trash for fat fingered bourgeois children to play with. You must get around a lot to stay undetected all these years. Do you know any secret paths? Pinball workshops? I may. Class year. He repeats the name with care, as if it were at risk of breaking. He knows her, but hadn't heard the name. My ears don't reach the city with the victim. Don't leave any loose ends. Get him on everything. Everything is brands with you individualists. Who cares what brand my shoes are? Sansa? Some shit. Show me the souls, please, Mr. Taras. Fucking imbecile. The maker is Sensorique, the model is Corobe, and the size is 43. These are not the unusual horizontal pattern soles you saw in the dust on the floor of the hidden room. They do, however, seem to be about the same size. The size fits, but not the sole. Sire, he doesn't have to be wearing them right now. Racking those brains, are you? Desperate to report something back to your masters? They must have really loved that dead fuck. The lieutenant gives you a quick sideways glance, 
and nods to acknowledge. The prints were his. You can see it in those eyes. He can't keep them from flickering, looking for something. The old man stares at his own prints in the ash around the fire. Silence suddenly, some strange process within him. A gush of wind, seagulls in the distance. You know who he was, a coalition trained murderer, armored and armed. He wasn't human, the blunt end of a hammer, dripping with blood. Beating us to the ground, moaning with joy. You hounds get so thorough when a company trained killer dies. I haven't seen you on this coast for 40 years. You know, maybe I should have killed one sooner. Got your attention. Now you stop beating druggies and prostitutes in your basement. Now you come to investigate. Not when they die by the hundreds. This is it. Shot him, shot him. Say shot him, not killed him. Oh, the inhumanity. One paramilitary less in Revachol. The lieutenant raises his right arm to hush you. Hush, he does not need to be pushed anymore. The ball is rolling. I had them in my sights, both of them. Him and the whore. I was breathing with them, in phase, and I pulled the trigger and flew on the air until I landed in his mouth. I didn't think I had a shot like that in me anymore. I did. I saw him kneel there with his mouth full of death and that stupid look on his face. And his dick still in her. Nothing. I went to sleep. Next morning there were Maybells everywhere. The world was white. Or what's left of it, anyway. My last spring here. I knew the fascists would come to avenge their own. And so they did. Mr. Tras, are you aware you're confessing to murder? Yes. And you are looking at Dan, the victim and a young woman, having sex through the scope of your rifle that night before you shot him? The old man nods. Why? Because that's what they were doing. The motive. This is where the motive is going to come from. You can coax it out of him. The lieutenant's preparing the ground. I don't understand. Do you, detective? I don't understand this part. I'm always looking. Are you always looking through the scope of a rifle? I'm just trying to understand. A rifle scope has the best magnification. Helps him see all the shit. And if you don't like it, then you pull the trigger? Yes. Think of it as a form of critique. He will not stop now. These dialectical materialist types never do exploit it. You've got him going. Connect every little piece now. Wrap this up like a gift. Start with when he first saw him. It will give him a chance to ramble. Three weeks ago, when the rich hag came in on her galley, her honor guard came in tow. Joyce. He means Joyce. Wrinkled up whore. Yes, old-fashioned. They moved into a deserted apartment above the roundabout. Radio equipment out for all to see. Reactionary radio playing, sloppy and drunk. I've seen their kind during the landing. Those Occidental and Mestfalangs weren't conscripts. 
boys like us. They were whites. All they know is to destroy and hurt. Barely alive. They like to kill while they're on their drugs. After the landing, in the burning years, I would take shots at them. End them. The worst ones, if I had a bullet to spare. I could see they've returned now to show their real face. The face they don't dare show their bourgeois voters back on Mundi with their families and polyester clothes. Them. Fucky. I didn't like that. Jealousy is a reactionary concept. I didn't like the Reaver enjoying himself. Drugged out, soothed in the arms of a young woman. I wanted him to die so he could not enjoy life anymore. For him to stop reacting to stimuli, to be broken off from the world, cordoned into darkness. And I wanted to see his head explode. That too. She should know better than to hold a child murderer between her thighs. I knew he'd be there for one more second, writhing. That's all it takes for the bullet to reach his head. Now that I think of it, I wasn't aiming for his mouth. I wanted his brains to spill out on her, but you can't have everything. This man has seen past her, like you did. And now he longs to see her covered in blood. To punish her. Since she came to Martinez, I saw her sneaking in the reeds early in the morning, behind the fell building. It was dark, still winter. She didn't have her skimpy outfit on then, just a spot in the night, moving. Past the fell building on the coast, what was she doing there? Hiding something in the water. She had a fag after she'd done it. I was up in the ruins there. She couldn't see me, but I could see her, smoking. She was nervous, but not scared. Her passport and ticket to Villiers, <coughs> and from there to Cachet Brut. In the free state of Seminine, hidden away at the edge of the earth, near the Pale. After she was gone... Did you keep what was in it? When we found the submersible, it was empty. No. Why would I do that? I didn't need tickets to Villiers. I put them back. If I wanted to extort someone, I'd do better. This implies that he's thought about extorting her. Also, a little inconsistency here. He was surprised to hear her name, Clasia, before. Would he not have seen it on the documents? Why would I need that trash? I'm not going to Villiers. You didn't say Clasia in there. Uh, it was something. Uh, I don't remember. It was dark that morning. I only remember her face on the photo. I did. She had a face like an archipelago with those birthmarks. And a body hard and lean and bruised all over. Black and yellow. I could see she's taken a beating. I could see who she was, too. A spook. On the run. Revachal's the cloaker of capital now. All the bag men and arms dealers end up here to do drugs and have sex like animals. You could tell she was a spook from the documents? She had different color hair on the photo and glasses, forged. Some sordid bourgeois affair. I've heard about this kind of thing on the radio. He's setting it up for you. The bruises, you can't make that out in a scope. You can't see bruises through a scope. It's just a blur. 
it quickly comes to you. Oh, yes. Cutting those drugs of hers into little lines with a knife. Masturbating. Did you make that horror? With a clip point knife. Good for listening in, too. For hearing the moaning and the snorts. Like that, too. Yes. Bending like a bow against the glass. I've been through all of Martinez. Every nook and cranny. Yes, that too. The things they did in that little room. What she'd do to feel good. Funny, the way light works. You turn it on inside, and it gets so dark out, you can't see a man looking in. I learned that in the 20s, when they were still hunting me. I've seen people do some shit, but... Those two took the cake. You hear the familiar scribble of the lieutenant's pen. A quick glance at you. One more loose end down. We're doing this, detective. How did you get in there, the hidden pinball workshop? I can just walk in there now after a good wash. I told you, they think I'm an antisocial. Closing hour is a good time. The kitchen's empty. You had to open the steel door in the kitchen? How? I got that open a long time ago. Some bourgeois game merchant lived there. I don't know, 15 years ago? He left spare keys all over, and I took one. Then I saw her turn the light on one night in my scope. Andy found use for it. A spare key, like the one hanging behind the Union Box window. She practically breastfed that man. You wouldn't believe the things she let him do to her. You stare at them too. In your mind, her innocent stay still turns to leave. Airport back in hand, silks flowing in her wake. See you tomorrow, Harry. Her voice rings in the evening air, burning. You're delusional. There's nothing to see in the soul of the bourgeois woman. It's the same as the surface. Sick hedonism and desperation. The world is insane. There's... There's nothing to hold on to. Only this. It's, it's not enough. The coals of his eyes glisten suddenly, like stones dripping with water. Is he crying? Man needs to feel something else. In this fight, it helps if you have your eye on something there. It's weakness, I know. Yes. Over the years, it's not unproletarian to feel something. No. I don't really know. I was there one night and she was crying, like a child, in the corner of her room on the floor, like she does sometimes. The day after I killed him. Yes. I don't know why I do the things I do anymore. It's as if something put the thought there to leave the flowers. Maybe. I told you, I have holes in my brain now. I wouldn't just sit here waiting for you. A sudden pang of rage. If you came ten years ago, I would have killed you. In the silence, the lieutenant draws a line in his notes, then nods at you once more. One more down. Her. The lieutenant nods at you in acknowledgement. That's it. Motive. We have it. Where is she, that Clasier? I haven't seen her there for days. Gone. I knew it. She kept staring into the scope this last week at the island, like she knew. She'd look, 
at night, crying or smoking on the roof, staring right into me. It doesn't matter. Midtown, across the Bay of Revachon, snow falls on 40-story towers. Above them, Lausanne Central Aerodrome, a cocoon suspended in the snowy sky by a web of suspension wiring encircled by hybrid aircraft. On the platform, a young woman is withdrawing from amphetamines, barbiturates and alcohol. Yet still, she smiles among the crowd, among the great ghosts of the city she's leaving for another, far south. Smaller, distant, hidden, not like the great chandelier she sees sparkle in the night below her. Street lights, towers, tenements and water, and across it, a dark strip of ruins, barely visible, if she didn't squint her eyes. There, on a dilapidated jetty in a nameless village, two police officers and one special consultant look across a narrow strip of sea. The ruins of a sea fort stick out of the water, built by Philippe II, reappropriated by the commune, then lost in the landing. He's there, doing what exactly, I don't know. Satellite officer Vic Mayer points at the ruins. Behind that anti-aircraft something, that's why we can't see him. Special consultant Heidelstam is optimistic. We'll see the boat when he comes. Let's go get a coffee until then. I know this interesting little place. Where? His voice trails off as the three walk down the jetty. As the men go, patrol officer Minnow looks back over her shoulder at the crumbling fortification in the snowfall, like a rotten tooth rising out of the water. Good luck, Harry, she thinks. You need something good for this. We could get more. We've got him talking. Who knows what he's seen and done over the years? You could get more out of him. He likes talking. A tragic comedy. Druggies, prostitutes, and rentiers. Specifically, the whole city is a charnel house. Stripped clean and draped in neon. But Martinez... Martinez is the worst. Because of the racists, everyone is a racist in Martinez. It's their favorite thing to do in the whole world, listening to race-themed radio shows, in the ruins, in their lorries. Pump full of steroids and Radio Revachon 92. Race this, race that. It's all sanctioned by that social democratic union and the farce of a social democrat who runs it. Yes, the fly larva in his container. He let some nihilistic advertising yuppies erect a statue of Philippe III, a syphilitic murderer on the town square, to spit on the working class. Not since the serfs of ancient Pericarnassus has history produced a more inert social class than the Martinez proletariat. The rest of Revachol at least pretends to rebuild. These people still live in ruins. Intense, like animals, like those boom boom morons on the ice. A pity they didn't drown in that tent of theirs. The worst of them is the blood-drenched Sucreon on her yacht, licking her lips. The old whore's gone now, her gun-toting porcelain men are dead. So, actually, no. The worst is that old cop parading around in his uniform, throwing balls all day. It's not enough that the racists and liberals are dancing on our graves. The old loyalist ghouls still parade the ruins, too. 
Every morning he's there, while the parasites he fought to protect are off in Ozon, or Quayamoran, or some other island they built their palaces on, feeding on drugs and having sex with their own children. That's all the rich really want, sex with their own children. Throughout history, even the royal bloodline of the suzerain it's all just an excuse for them to have sordid sex. At least that old cunt Frisell is now dead. We did good when we pushed him under that horse car. If only in the 30s, those disco whores. The disco whores are too much. Hatred shuts down his brain's language center, leaving only a nonsensical sputter. There was something about a statue and nihilistic advertising agency people might be worth investigating. Ask about that cock on parade too. Make sure you get everything here. Horse. Syphilis is a disease. Philip III contracted in a whorehouse. The statue is an abomination. The bacteria entered his brain and made him squander trillions on sparkling wine, cocaineum, and monuments of himself. His son, Philip IV, the insane, contracted syphilis in the womb. That is technically possible. Although Philippe III was not actually syphilitic, he was just mad. And he still went on to govern Revachol for 25 years. We lost two million lives toppling that mode of government. And those grotesque statues too. Hundreds of them. What a keen remark. Yes, it is, isn't it? It's still there. Do you know why? No. Cynical design cockroaches like you erected a new, ironic version of it. We tore it down with honest working class plastic explosives. But there it is again, grinning. Art is a bourgeois establishment. It's an affront to humanity. Every gallery should be bulldozed and the artists should all be given 30 years of hard labor in Yekokata. Wait, it suddenly strikes you. Perhaps it was not as it seemed. What are you talking about? What is this madness? The lieutenant, too, has cocked his head and is looking at you with a strange expression. So you're saying it's a communist monument now? Not only. We did always have the prettiest posters. Maybe you're right. That is how dialectics work. But understand this, art is still a bourgeois institution. <coughs> and they all should still be sent to Yekokata. You know, you don't sound like a liberast anymore. Maybe I was wrong. Maybe I will be escorted to prison by another Marzovian communist, as I should. Straight to Yekokata for this old revisionist. At last, atonement for my sins. Revisionism, reactionary ideation, desertion. He still refuses to believe you subscribe to Marzovian socio-economics, but entertaining the thought has given him some measure of solace. Camaraderie, even. For a second there, he feels less alone. But then, the second passes. The fat union man let them put it there. Corrupt as he is. Probably got a fat check for it, too. Shared with the law. Accusations of corruption. Push them aside with a sharp change of topic, officer. Put the heat on him. 
another hideous disappointment. Unions are the real enemy, the true enemy of the proletariat, placating the masses. Disappointment, so personal. He displays a familiarity with the union's top brass. That deformed toad, I wouldn't expect him to wipe his own ass. I mean, the brains of the operation, the smart one. That mobster toad couldn't run a shit house. He has no political education. His twin, Edgar Clare, that one's been to one of those East River Shaw universities. He talks a big game about uprising and alienation and so on. He's been sweet talked by this Edgar. They must have met in person for such animosity to have developed. You can't live alone. The Clares wouldn't miss a man hidden in their own backyard. Not all this time. Nothing happens in Martinez without them knowing. Of course. Maybe the Clares asked him to. Don't go straight for the kill. Exhaust everything else first. So I haven't approached anyone. I hid. It was Edgar who came to me. How did he know you were here? He didn't just stumble in like an oaf. He figured it out. Some kids told him about a monster on the island. I told you, he has brains. Stepped right off the boat and walked down where you came. I even kept the door open for him. Thought he was a man of the left, wouldn't rat me out. I was right about one of those things. Twenty years ago, neither of them could walk now, could they? They were less fat then. That's around the time the Clears came to power. Edgar did the talking, paid his respects like I would a fossil in a uniform, offered platitudes about the struggle, flaunted his pink degree, even quoted Mazov. Never trust a social democrat who quotes Mazov. Oh, and charity too. They love their charity. Offered me blankets and social housing. I still have the gas cooker he brought. Let me be here. The ZOC is an unlawful successor of the commune of Revachol. We took this fortification from the Loyalists. Even the Clares understand this. They let him be here. Understanding was a courtesy. But why such a courtesy? You know why I killed that fucker, comrade. As to Edgar, I'm not doing anything for that swine again. Again? What have you done for Edgar before? Tried teaching him some Marzovian socioeconomics. They didn't stick. We parted ways. <coughs> okay, he didn't do the hanged man for them. But he's insinuating something. There is more here. You can feel it. He was not outright lying. But almost. The connection comes to you like a splash of cold water. Dark, cold water. Hey. <laughs> he acknowledges it. Here we go. A twist behind the dark bend. That bourgeois cow, Tiffin Holly was her name. Licked the rich man's hand every time he came to town. Never seen a labor leader so hot on mutual cooperation. And money. She liked that too. That Holly was a real bridge builder and a deal maker. Bordering on sentimentality, it drips out of him, tempered by something familiar to you. A familiar rage. She was. And she was real soft on those money men. Had a Barbara Muscova bag over her shoulder that she liked to bring to work. 
called in, they say, on the eve of battle, ran away, vanished like a piss stain. No, that's not quite it, is it? Did she? They say her daughter called in, not her personally. But that wasn't really her daughter, was it? No, I guess it was not. She couldn't make the call herself. Here it is, the bend in the river. Because she was dead? Just say nothing. The cow caught a bullet in her right lung, fell into the canal grasping her tit and drowned. Or bled, hard to say. It was a sloppy job and a moving target. She was going home. Waddling, dressed in yellow, drunk like she often was. The ruins are black around her, and she had a yellow leather bag under her arm. She tried to cross the canal, heading home to Grand Coron or Betancourt, some place like that, where they build those new batements for the people who flourish in the hell around her and the ruins. <laughs> It was someone. Someone shot her. Or maybe she just fell. I get these violent ideations. My memory is filled with holes, especially the 30s. All I know is... Another big spike of rage, different from the one he has for her. Nothing changed. Not in the material base, not in the hegemony. There was no uprising, just words. The Union fizzled, sobbed. Nothing came of it. Nothing. Edgar didn't keep his part of the deal. <laughs> If you were to testify to this, give the RCM something on Edgar, you could walk. We would strike everything you've done and process you as a POW. You were in a war. You were on assignment. We could even extradite you to the Samaran People's Republic. A degenerate worker state. Go shit. No, thank you. I'm Reva Sholian. My days are short. I will rot away here, in a moral intern cell. I will not testify to anything. <coughs> Come on, just a little. Your buddies. I haven't lived and fought for 40 years to end up as a collaborationist. I've heard it on Channel 8, 40 AM, and Le Canal du Crime. Everyone is a blobber in this world. Everyone betrays everyone. They're all already locked up for betrayal. The best ones, the ones with heart, were slaughtered, trampled. The same old freezing hatred. There is plenty here to work with once he's in custody, and the lieutenant knows it. He gives you a little nod to proceed. Every fucking morning for 34 years, throwing that ball, one ball against the other. I've always loathed that game. That is not a working class game. I don't care what they say on Radio June. Royalist ghouls played like it was life itself. Click, clack across the water each day. And that uniform, like a parrot plumage. I won't even mention that he's a traitor to his race. A patank maniac race traitor. I remember him. I remember him from La Noce. Not him, personally, his make and model. There were tens of thousands of them. I thought we took them all out before the Liberals came to their rescue. We missed one. That one. There doesn't seem to be a single person under the pine today. Not even Gaston. 
alone. Fat and plump, like a pheasant, just begging to be popped off. Please, Mr. Truss, shoot me. He whispers with such predatory hunger, it borders on longing. Not yet. I like to look at him strut around, place the crosshair on his medals, right on his face, and just fiddle the trigger. Think about it. Let the bonbon melt in my mouth. Save the treat for later. He is a juicy bonbon, that one. A real treat to the black day, the blackest. When I put that gun in my own mouth, I think. No, don't waste it. Put this lead in that cock, Rene. For the boys he killed. And then I look at him throw those balls, and I suddenly feel... better. I even hid one bullet so I'd always have one for him. Haven't seen him around lately, strutting around. Must be down with arthritis. I hope it hurts like hell. I hope he sweats blood. Hearing it may destabilize him. Are you sure you've gotten everything from him? <laughs> yes, of course. I hope it hurts like hell. I hope he sweats blood. Must be torture. Not to be throwing his balls for a whole week. He seems relieved. Could he have been worried for him? He reminds him of himself. The same hatred. The same. You try to think of another thing, but no. It's just the hatred. They are veterans of the same war. Somewhere west in Coal City, his enemy is lying in a dark room on a metal slider. In Lausere Municipal, like he will too. Soon. Half of the war between these men is over. With an agitated gait, satellite officer Jean Heron Vichmer paces the jetty. 22 kilometers east in Martinez. What could he possibly be doing there for so long, he said. Police work? Patrol officer Judith Minot replies with a tinge of hope in her voice. Tinge of warmth, too, against the cold air rising from the water. He's drunk, she thinks, and we all know it. Still, she's just trying to see it in a generous light. Glad. It's all gone. For a 60-year-old man with stomach trouble, who spent his entire life alone on an uninhabited island, he seems surprisingly fit. He's clearly a drug user of the painkiller sort, prone to erratic hand gestures and malnourished. But that's it. I ain't going anywhere. Precisely what you could not see before. For a man who spent 44 years in an in the urban wild. Indeed, he speaks fluidly. His movements are rapid, if erratic. His voice, despite the cough, is there. It is capable of expressing complicated ideas. Above all, he seems animated. It's a mystery. This animation comes at a cost too. Erratic hand gestures, thought processes cut off like threads as he just stares at the logs or the reeds, 
he also suffers mood swings bubbling to the surface, unconstrained by his nervous system. Great leaps of emotion, from anger to grief, despair. Perhaps, but his seems more than that. The inner turmoil takes unexpected turns, as if forced on him in a way. In summary, you sense some underlying neurological disorder. You've seen demented people before. This feels similar, yet different. When his thoughts move, they are lucid. Keen, even. Not senile. No, I'm not okay. I shit blood, and I'm surrounded by insane people. There it is again. Erratic hand motions, bouts of rage, and the stomach thing too, of course. What? But you said I would be taken to the... This terror is the sum of all the uncontrollable movements and mood swings he's been exhibiting. The wind picks up. The silence on the water is broken all around you. Little shivers of waves appear. The lieutenant continues, like an incantation. Your wayfarer rights have been suspended. Information provided to the officers on the scene will be used against you by the prosecution. You will be given legal counsel within one week and must face court in 44 days. Do you understand? Do you understand? But... No, I don't want to. I have to stay here. He is a brave man. Why is he unraveling? He's sweating. Beads are forming on his forehead. Your confirmation is not required, sir. Now on to the boat. Not really. We could escort him to the pier, then either one of us can take him inland while the other stays here, but... But then, who watches him while you're coming back here? You come back for me? How about I go and send a boat back for you? What is this farce? This is a fucking farce. I can't. Something is happening. Stop. Lillian. You could ask her, maybe. There it is again. To your north, as it has been since you came to the coast. The reeds whisper. Stalks rubbing against each other. But then, in the middle of it, Something completely different. It sounds like a bow, very slowly being drawn against the strings of a violin. A very small violin, made of reeds and rushes. Maybe there is room for three on the boat. What? What are you talking about? Is this... really us? Your skin crawls. delicate tangle of arms and legs unfolds from the reeds, limb by limb, to then just stand there, moving its scythe-like arms in ghostly silence. What are you talking about? There's nothing there. The stick insect is over three meters tall. It looks straight at you with its tiny pinprick eyes and its grotesquely small head. You feel your legs shaking under you, and your gun hand move to your holster to grab the gun. You feel the lieutenant's hand on your back, and then you hear him say four words. I can see it. Thank God. If he can see, then you're not insane. But that means it's really there, spinning slowly, in absolute silence, its limbs long and slender. Be very, very careful. 